Okay, hello guys, and uh, in this episode, okay, I think it's maybe too early to go to episode in this video, uh, let's start with reviewing what was, in my opinion, really interesting happening in the AI world uh, last week. And when I say my opinion, it will be really very subjective, because of course there are many newsletters and nice blogs and Twitter threads that really go systematically through all the recent news in the geopolitics, science, startups, technologies, etc., etc. I think we have a lot of, and maybe even enough of that. So basically here I'll allow myself to be uh, selective and uh, maybe not opinionated, I'll try not to, but subjectives, by selecting something that was interesting to me, what was happening kind of in the real life, real world, and making one step further. So basically not just discussing, oh, you know, wow, there is a new cool startup. If there is a cool startup that I and my colleagues or friends really like, let's try to use it. Let's solve some real tasks with it and let's record and share how it actually works in the real world. And uh, regarding all the topics, if it's a new technology, let's try it, let's release the open source code. If it's some, again, startup, let's use it, etc., etc. So this is the main idea my idea of making one step further compared to the other blogs, podcasts, and uh, Twitter, Twitter threads, etc. And uh, let's keep it short and uh, let's start. So the first uh, topic, it was uh, my Friday discussion with my friend who, and we discussed basically, okay, like who did or didn't jump on the, on the real, really good growth of the AI stocks during the last couple of weeks, months, and uh, even a quarter. So there are companies like Palantir that grew basically twice. And yeah, it said if someone didn't buy, good, and kudos to those who bought. And uh, when we were discussing that, it was like, okay, yeah, we can speak afterwards ex ante about the, all the stocks that grew, but could we actually apply this kind of systematic approach and test the hypothesis if uh, we could actually build something like AI index and uh, see if all air companies are growing or on average air companies can grow in and actually outperforming some benchmarks. And actually there exists a really interesting tool called uh, Sematic and uh, how it actually working. We can, uh, it's actually using generative AI, as you can understand. We can get, uh, we can search for ex uh, AI artificial intelligence. We search for different companies we can select by country, sectors, capitalization, growth, and select the companies. And basically, this is the way I try to build a couple of indices. For example, all AI innovators globally without any restrictions. And as we can see, if we take the all history, okay, all available history, actually only recently AI stocks started to outperform the even such a basic index as S&P 500. Basically, all the other times it was more risky, falling a lot and basically going together with the uh, growth stocks and the technology stocks, the ETFs here. And it consists mainly at the, the, from the large cap companies like Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, which kind of makes sense. Also try to separate it into large cap companies and small cap companies and US based and uh, out of US based. But we can see if we talk about the large cap as the most liquid ones, maybe most more stable ones, US companies are outperforming their peers over this three months period. And uh, if we compare them compared to the same benchmarks, actually over three months, maybe it was not a bad idea to invest in the, in the growth stocks or even in the technology stocks. We see it, they overperform. But over the six months period, AI stocks are winning over one year as well year to now, almost the same as the growth stocks. So I would say we can accept this hypothesis, at least, uh, yeah, if you take all AI related companies, uh, they, over most of the time periods, they outperform. Uh, but what is interesting that the more companies we add, of course, the diversification is played in, we have much more interesting revenues. But also only recently we can see that uh, AI stocks started to outperform. So the question is, are we going to play momentum and expect that it will grow even more? Or are we going to play mean reversal or maybe to bet on the small cap stocks? Actually, I tried to build small cap as well, but it seems like this solution is not really stable. So basically some of the indices I create, they simply don't load. But uh, I recommend you trying it out. And I think maybe I'll build similar solution on my own 
to be able to experiment more with different metrics, etc., etc. Another business-related topic that I also found really interesting, it is about the creating AI products. Since I work in this in a service company, basically consulting and outsourcing and building AI solutions with other companies, uh, very often we need to align align on the goals. And there are different business model canvases and AI canvases. And one of the most famous one, and you can see it in this article by Harvard Business Review, simple tool to start making decisions with the help of, help of AI. By the way, AJ Argval, he has also a great book on this topic. But basically the idea, if you do something with the startups or with the products, most probably you know about this, how to basically split your goal, your product into different things. And they build it all around like a single prediction. It's unit economics of a single prediction. So for a prediction, you need some input, they need to judge it, they need some data. Okay, you have a prediction, but you predict something, but now you need to do something with it. What is your success uh, metrics? Uh, and of course, feedback from the users. And this is really legit. Actually, we still use it in our company. But with the in the age of generative AI, the word prediction is not that relevant anymore because when you want to, based on prompt, you want to generate another piece of text or image or audio, we are not really, I mean, technically, of course, maybe if you're an AI engineer, you know that we are talking about the prediction, but uh, product-wise, we're talking about the generation and basically how to adapt this AI canvas. And of course, the first thought is to find maybe someone else already did something similar. And there is Dain Studios, and they have something what they call Generative AI Canvas, which is a really legit name. But as you can see, it is much more similar to the normal business model canvas with some pieces of human AI collaboration process, regulatory and ethical considerations, IP, cost of maintenance, which is useful, but not answering our issue with the prediction. Because our goal, how we use this canvas, is to align with different teams. And then we found in Datentheiber uh, interesting uh, interesting scheme which I think is uh, much more suitable to our goals. And as we can see, they clearly define input and output which can be text, images, video, audio, graphs, diagrams, models, and something that is happening in between. In between indeed we can have a prediction as one of the AI applications. Basically, I want to detect something on the image. I want to predict something from the text. But also you can filter it, extract something, anonymize it, mask it, augment it, summarize it, explain it, transform it. So it allows much more rich amount of AI things apart from the detection and prediction. And if you look into what they show here as application, actually it really fits into things like uh, uh, they call the interesting case because said company create fake videos and basically how it is how we can put this case here we have existing video of a person and images of another person so in the video you want to de do detection classic AI, you want to recognize person in the video then you want to augment this video you want to put another person instead of this one and then you get a new video which is really legit case it fits here but it would be hard to fit it here in the prediction because what, what are you trying to predict in the fake videos application? It doesn't really work like that. That's why I think we will use this uh, Dutton type example as the, let's say, as the feature to, aug to augment the classic uh, canvas. And I suggest you guys that you can use it as well. Yeah, those were two interesting business things that uh, I found I want to share with you guys this week. But also there are a couple of engineering things that also I found interesting. Uh, maybe you, in your company, you already have some routines when you actually have to deal with a lot of documents and decision making with your documents. And uh, imagine you want to choose the insurance. Like it's very simple. You choosing the insurance provider and they all send you their large PDFs with their plans that, that are going to look something like uh, that. Yeah, this is just one from the internet. And uh, of course you want to analyze it and imagine you have 10 of them like that or 20 of them like that or you make some more complex decision making. 
And uh, most probably you heard about things like talk to the talk to your documents, talk to your PDFs. And of course, in our company to solve this task, we decided to build the same thing because you cannot just throw 100 PDFs into ChatGPT and ask, okay, ChatGPT, tell me what is the best, right? It's not, not, it's not working like this, at least right now. And you cannot do the same with things like Bard and Cloud either. So yeah, we first started with, uh, of course, with the quick prototype, uh, basically when you give your PDFs, they're transformed into the text. Then basically you take those text uh, inputs and you turn them into a, into the entries in a vector database. Actually, vector database is a really interesting topic. It would be interesting to uh, maybe discuss it in the next video, even from the business perspective, because right now, even if you have like all the videos, audios, images, texts, you don't want to store them as a blobs in a classic database because you want to unlock search and generative AI. So vector databases are going to explode as well. There will be nice and interesting competition. So this is the topic that I think will come back more than once again. And uh, even after coming back to the database uh, in our case, even after storing all those PDFs as a text in the vector databases, it's still a lot of data. So I want to narrow it down. So basically we decided to define a set of questions that we ask over this database to get only relevant information for us. Basically, what about deductibles, uh, preventive care, uh, money questions, limitations, dental care, global, remote, etc., etc. So we ask questions, we get answers, we get a summary, and over the summary, we already ask this classic chat GPT like prompt, okay, I want you to act as the expert in the insurance. Uh, here is the summary, give me the rating X out of 10 among following categories, which healthcare provider, insurance provider should I choose? And actually it does what it, what, what is asked. Basically it says, okay, here's my summary of this provider. Here's my summary of this provider. Here is the rating. Overall, I suggest you this. And of course you can scale it to as many one PDFs, etc., etc. So we also wrap it in a simple application where you just drag and drop your PDFs just give some dumb names to the files. You say, okay, this is my company. Uh, here are my questions for the summarization. Here are my criteria for making a decision and gets you the final answer, which is actually correct uh, based on the numbers that you can double check yourself. So this is a nice case. And uh, to help you with the same, I prepared a small open source projects, project where you basically get the code for the app which you can use uh, yourself just uh, again if you are able to use it you can change the prompts the questions etc etc and uh, here's all the super, all the open source code that uh, you can leverage to simplify your processes and don't hesitate to ask me if you have some questions or you want to change something or whatever you want to ask yeah and uh, another thing that's also kind of technical, but uh, I would say it's a bit more triggering question, but it's related to technology programming development. I found this uh, interesting and a bit triggering tweet uh, also a couple of days ago. And uh, it's about like two programmers who were hired to build a solution. One guy from Germany, 100% code, 19 years experience. Another guy from Pakistan, Copilot, GPT-4, no code, four years experience, and the question, what do you think happened? Oh, what do you think happened? We all know what happened. In the end, Hamid from Pakistan developed everything better, faster, cheaper, etc., etc., etc. And as we see here, Alex from Germany finished just 7% of the tasks, estimated to develop everything 45k, and uh, but all the code is unit test covered. Okay, this is something what, uh, I mean, this is the great tweet from the, from the high perspective, 3 million views, it's a great result. And uh, actually, partly, I even agree with the statement because I think the key word in all this thread is MVP, minimum viable product. And if you go back to the AI world and if, for example, I'm asked and, or I need to make the MVP, of course, I'm interested to make it as fast and cheap as possible. And there are tools like Teachable Machine from Google when you can uh, basically even just use your webcam 
to create a super, super, super simple AI solution. Basically, let's say I want to detect myself uh, when I'm sitting, I'm recording this right now. So I'm creating data set with me sitting in the chair. And uh, then let's say I'm going to create a data set of empty chair. Let's make a data set. Wow. Wow, look at me. I'm doing data collection. Super cheap, super fast. Then I even uh, can train the model uh, just in the browser. See, I'm doing nothing. Do I need to do to know to be PhD from Stanford? Do I need to know machine learning? Nah, not really. And uh, then you can see demo solution is working. If it's me, it shows class one, empty chair, class two. And look at this fancy Twitter trick. I can just export the model as uh, JavaScript. I will use ChatGPT uh, to import it into my website. And basically I've built the MVP under one hour, 100 bucks, that's it. Of course, compared to hiring a Stanford PhD, etc., etc., it sounds and looks sexy and cool. And actually, for many things, it is good enough because, as you can see, you can create the uh, audio projects here and even pose estimations projects here. So this is already good enough. But when you go beyond MVP, when you actually when you actually want to build a solution that uh, can be scaled in the cloud to millions of users, when uh, this user is giving you feedback and you need to implement new features, improve the quality of the current feature. Uh, this might be not enough. So again, I agree with the tweet that uh, for building MVP, such no-code solutions and leveraging AI, it's great. It's fast, it's cheap, and if you, in if you can integrate it in some kind of front-end, this is amazing. But uh, to build actual products that work on scale beyond validating the business hypothesis, I wanted to share you a couple of uh, resources that uh, if you... Uh, the engineer or technology leader, they will be definitely useful for you. And even if you work in the management, I really recommend you checking them out. And I think later on, I will release a summary of it. What do you need to pay attention to from the kind of elements perspective uh, to ensure that uh, your solution is going to grow business-wise and technology-wise and uh, product-wise? So basically, one is full-stack deep learning course. And you can see the topics. It's about infrastructure, experiment management, testing, data management, annotation, deployment, continual learning. So basically, okay, then you need to update your model. Monitoring, team management, ethics. This is something what I consider really important. This is the topics that I'm integrating in my company delivery process as well. Another uh, good uh, source is Made with ML course, machine learning operations course. Topics are basically the same. You want a good planned product. Uh, you want a good high quality data processes began because again, if you want to update your solution, you need good data. Here, the modeling part, basically what I showed you in that uh, demo, baselines and evaluation. Of course, those things you can do fast and cheap, but design, data, packaging, serving, testing, ensure it's reproducible so you can quickly change and scale teams to skeleton production and data engineering. Those are the things that uh, right now ChatGPT can help you with and can help a lot, but most probably you need someone who understands the scope and can ask ChatGPT the right questions. There are a couple of other interesting courses and I'll add them as the links, but I think we can wrap this topic here as well. And uh, please let me know, maybe you know more than me and even all these other topics can be easily done with no code or just with AI, but so far, I think we can have a nice mix of if you want to go fast, you go alone with no code. If you want to go uh, long distance, if you want to go far, you better go with the team and with the good processes with it. So uh, let's see how much time we spend on this particular video. It's around 20 minutes, which I think is a great timing. Uh, I will try to keep it like this every time. Basically, my plan is every week to release a video like this to take one, two, three topics that are kind of business product related, market related, and to make one step further to demonstrate you practically what you can do with it. And also take a couple of topics that are more technology, engineering, uh, science related, and also to give you one more step or to give you some open source code, to demonstrate you some solution uh, that you can immediately use right now and get some benefits uh, yourself. 
please let me know what can be done better. Maybe you don't agree with me or something, which is great. I'm really up to a nice argument and conversation. And uh, let me know if you want to hear about something, what you think is interesting and uh, good next time. Thank you and see you soon. Ciao, Pascal.